I like to discuss infrared photography. In this video, I'll show you how to shoot infrared images with an iPhone, what equipment you'll need, what settings to use when shooting, and how to turn this into this. If you'd like to shoot infrared with the camera that you always have on you, then this is for you. If you have no experience with infrared, no problem. I'll cover the details. There are some challenges to shooting infrared with a mobile phone, so I'll address these. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to fix the hotspots produced by your mobile phone lens when shooting in infrared. You can even use these same techniques to fix hotspots from your infrared images shot with a DSLR or mirrorless camera. The iPhone I'm using is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It has three cameras, telephoto, wide, and ultra-wide. Much of what I'll cover will apply to other mobile phones, but the exact results may vary. I've tried holding a lens filter in front of the camera, but that doesn't work very well. I picked up this universal cell phone clip-on lens filter adapter, a link is in the description. This accepts 37mm lens filters, the same size as used by the Kalari Pocket point-and-shoot full-spectrum camera. It comes with a 37mm circular polarizer filter, which I didn't need. I bought it on Amazon for about 16 US dollars. It clips to the camera, but you'll need to move it around if you switch between lenses. I have a pack of 37mm infrared filters that I purchased for the Kalari Pocket. If you purchase one individually, 37mm filters are pretty affordable. Be sure to get a 720 nanometer filter. Lower numbered cutoffs will let in too much visible light. Higher numbered cutoffs won't work well with an iPhone. More on that later. I started shooting with this tripod phone mount holder head, which allows you to mount a mobile phone to a tripod. And of course, a tripod. Ultimately, I didn't really need either of these. For shooting, I tried all three lenses on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. This is the telephoto lens. This lens has mild hotspots. Hotspots are the overexposed areas in the center of an image that appear in some infrared images, depending on the lens. This is the wide lens. It also has hotspots. Of course, you can't switch to different lenses on a mobile phone, so you're stuck with the hotspots. They are fixable in editing, which I'll cover when I edit these images. This is the ultra-wide lens. This lens appeared to clip the edge of the infrared filter, which resulted in severe light leaks. I was planning to take some long exposures, but this proved to be a challenge. The iPhone has a maximum exposure time of one second. The camera app on the iPhone 11 and 12 has a night mode, which can be used to take longer exposures. Exposures are still limited to one second, but multiple exposures are combined in camera to create the final image. In Lightroom Mobile's professional mode, exposures are also limited to a maximum of one second. Lightroom Mobile has a long exposure mode, which can be used to capture exposures of up to five seconds. This is also done by combining multiple one second exposures. In Lightroom Mobile, go to the library, select the gear icon, select technology previews, then enable long exposures. Go back to the camera, tap the selector left of the shutter button, and select long exposure. Tap the shutter time, and then select exposures from half a second to five seconds. Long exposures can be used to create motion blur, such as with water. You can see how this 5 second exposure on the left completely blurred the motion of the water compared to the 1 35th of a second exposure on the right. Merging long exposures is also helpful for reducing noise. In this image at 200% magnification, the 5 second exposure on the left eliminated all of the noise from the image compared to the 1 35th of a second exposure on the right. Long exposures are good for motion blur and noise reduction. The relatively short shutter speeds, built-in image stabilization, and image merging made the tripod unnecessary. After getting similar results with and without the tripod, I stopped using it. A tripod might be more helpful with an Android camera that offers longer exposures without image merging. Most of the shooting I did was with the 720 nanometer infrared filter. I also tried the 850 nanometer filter, but due to the 5 second exposure limitation, I couldn't take a long enough exposure to make shooting with the 850 nanometer filter practical. Therefore, I stuck with the 720 nanometer filter. Light leaks are a challenge with this filter adapter, since the filter doesn't have a tight seal with the lens. 
Visible light can sneak around the filter and splash blue light onto the lens. This is especially problematic when shooting towards the sun. You can use your hand to block the light leaks like you would a lens flare. It's easy to set up a custom white balance in Lightroom Mobile with an infrared filter attached. This is not required when shooting in DNG, but easy to do if you're shooting in JPEG. Setting a custom white balance does make it easier to preview your image while shooting. If supported by your phone's camera, Lightroom Mobile can capture images in the DNG file format. On the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the wide and telephoto cameras support DNG. For some reason, the ultra-wide lens does not support DNG and can only capture in JPEG. Between the light leaks and not being able to shoot in DNG, the wide-angle lens is the most challenging to shoot infrared with on the iPhone. I found it essentially unusable. On to editing. A popular technique for processing infrared images is to set a white balance and then swap the reds and blues. I wanted to see how much color I could get from these images. When trying to set a white balance, the color temperature hits the low end of the range in Lightroom. A custom profile is required to shift the color temperature. The DNG files created by Lightroom Mobile can be opened in Adobe's DNG Profile Editor and used to create color temperature shifted custom profiles. If you can't download Adobe's DNG Profile Editor, you can get a custom profile from my infrared profile pack. A link is in the description. Unfortunately, the images did not contain much color, not useful color anyway. Not like the color you'd expect from a 720 nanometer infrared image with a unconverted DSLR or mirrorless camera. Aside from the light leaks, most of the color captured was noise, not the sky I was hoping to capture. So while it's possible to get a good white balance and swap the colors in Photoshop using the channel mixer, there wasn't much point. Ultimately, I decided to skip the custom profiles and just process the images as black and white in Lightroom Mobile. These lenses produce hotspots, but they're easily corrected using the Selective Radial Gradient in Lightroom Mobile. First, you want to shoot a calibration image on a flat, evenly lit surface. In this case, this was shot with the telephoto lens on a section of sidewalk that was evenly lit with the sun. I also shot the wide-angle lens, the same thing, a section of sidewalk that was evenly lit with the sun. You'll want to do corrections for each of the lenses individually because the corrections will be slightly different between the lenses. The good news, though, is that once you make these corrections, you can save them as a preset and then easily apply them to all of the images that use the same lens. So let's start with the telephoto lens. So the first thing that I want to do is go to selective at the bottom and I will click the plus at the top and the radial and I'll drop a radial in kind of the hottest spot there in the middle. What you'll find with hotspots is that frequently they are multiple overlapping hotspots. They're not a single hotspot. So to effectively attack them, you'll need multiple radials to do that. Since the most intense ones seem to be the smallest in the middle, I'll start with the smallest ones and then work my way out, typically needing two or three radials to address, address them. So I've got my first radial dropped there and I'll click light and then I'll just drop the exposure slightly. Usually it's not too much, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 in this case, might be more for different lenses, but in this case it's very, it's it's pretty minor. So I've got that, that center hotspot addressed. So now let's create another radial, and we'll drop that down, and this one is gonna be a little bit bigger. So this one will go this way. This is a little challenging to do on the, the iPhone. On a mobile phone, you may find it easier to do these on the desktop. So if you find yourself shooting a lot of this style and you want to apply these uh, to them and you want to be very precise about correcting the hotspots, then I would recommend doing this on the desktop. But for now, we'll continue to do it on the phone so we can see what that looks like. So now you can see I'll drop the exposure here until it kind of evens out. Sometimes I'll try going a little bit beyond it so it's a little too dark. Might be a little hard to see in the video here, but we're just trying to hone in on what's the, the right level. I want to be able to apply this same set of radials to other images, so I'm going to create a preset. So in the upper right hand corner, we'll click the menu and then create preset. So the first thing I'll do is name this preset. So I'm going to call this iPhone 12 T. And I could put this in a specific group. I'll just leave this in user presets. I'll do select and then none. I'm going to go under Tools and select Radial Gradients, so that's active. 
And that's the only thing I'm going to save in this preset. You could include other settings, so like a, a profile to convert the image to black and white or other settings that you like. But in this case, I'm just going to focus on the hotspots. So now we'll hit the checkbox in the upper right hand corner to save. So we've got our preset saved and now I can apply this to other images. So let's go back to our library and select another image. Should be an image shot with the same lens uh, so that the hotspots are identical. And from this lens, I'm going to scroll to the right at the bottom select presets. Now you can see my two presets. You can see iPhone 12T and iPhone 12W. And the iPhone 12T, when I apply that, you can see that it does a really nice job of eliminating those hotspots and creating a nice even tone throughout the image. Now I can select a profile. Let's play, pick a black and white profile. And there we go. So now I can begin editing this image, the, the other creative edits that I'd like to make. Let's go back to the library and pick one more image to apply this preset to. So you can see there's quite a bit of a hotspot here in the center of the image. Uh, the bottom of this garbage can is, is highlighted as well as it's almost got a halo on the sidewalk. So let's go down to presets and we'll select our preset and that'll clean that up nicely. Now I can do the same thing. I can go over to profiles, pick a profile, and there we go. So now I can begin doing the rest of my edits. So that's how you can create a preset to address the hotspots that exist when you're shooting with a mobile phone, you can save those and then apply those easily to all of the images that use the same lens. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.